So once again, uh, welcome, uh, Professor Ranjit. Um, so for the participants, let me quickly introduce you. Participants, uh, Ranjit Rajeshwaran is actually Chief Audiologist with the Madras ENT uh, Research Foundation. Uh, he's also a professor in audiology. Uh, he's the director and principal of MERF Institute of Speech and Hearing, uh, which is actually in association with Madras ENT Research Foundation. Uh, Mr. Ranjit, can you introduce yourself, right? I, I know I just introduced a very little, which I know. So probably you can tell a little bit more about us so that the participants will know better. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, very good afternoon to everyone. And my sincere thanks to Mr. Manikivel Larabugam. And uh, I briefly remember meeting you in the education fair. Right. And uh, it was quite uh, surprising and at the same time quite happy to receive a mail from you. And I, I immediately accepted for one of the main reason is that, you know, this is the need of the hubba. Correct. We don't react immediately. If you don't react or respond now, we lost the bus. Right. Correct. So I've been uh, talking about this to many medias in the past. In fact, um, um, even a couple of years ago, even last year, when there was... Incidents happens, people, students committing suicide just because they don't get into need and they don't have the, you know, the thing to do it. There's a huge, much of, uh, so much of hue and cry, a lot of media bashing going on regarding the need, 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 need. So I called up the media guys and told them, look, you know, don't politicize too much on uh, everything because you also have the responsibility of projecting what are the other alternatives oh, available geez. apart from MBBS, which right. are as good as MBBS. You know, there should also be a positive approach rather than just, you know, uh, highlighting on a specific incidents and those things. You know, it, it, everything has its own advantage and disadvantage, which has to be deliberated in detail, whether you know, need is required or not required, how to do it is all beyond our uh, thing, though everybody have their own opinions for and against, but that's a different uh, uh, discussion altogether. Right. So I was just telling these uh, people, you know, you should also now start educating students in the right direction. Give them the clear picture of what are the opportunities and the uh, possibilities of getting into other paramedical, medical or allied medical programs. Right. Sure. So right. that's one of the, that's, that's been my concern for, I mean, two, three years since these issues come up. So that's why I immediately, you know, re, uh, re, uh, swiftly responded to you that, okay, this is the need of our, we need to pitch in for us. And once again, thank you so much for uh, approaching me and arranging this wonderful meeting. And also my sincere wishes and uh, thanks to all the participants who have taken their time out to join, to listen to uh, this program. Now, without uh, wasting much time, let me tell you, you know, uh, what I am. So I'm basically, by qualification, I'm an audiologist and a speech language pathologist. But the, my work profile is not just uh, uh, doing audiology and speech language pathology, as defined in most of the Googles. The kind of audiology work what we do is much more advanced than any Google can explain to you. Okay. So if any one of you just go to Google and then uh, see audiology, speech language pathology, or just an audiology, it'll be, it will say they are the professionals, those are doing hearing testing, you know, training children to speak you know, for deaf children. These are the basic things that you would get. Maybe a little bit of advanced research will give you some information about what kind of uh, uh, speech disorders we handle about. But there are a lot of areas which Google doesn't explain clearly to the students, which means the deeper insight is not into it. There. So what I'm going to do is, uh, I mean, uh, I'm going to give delve into a different uh, insight from the student's perspective. So. Uh, me, if I am a student today, what will I think of taking up a profession? And what are my expectations? How does this profession meet my expectations? So whether I'm suitable to get into this profession or not. So I'm going to take the perspective of the student and I'm going to discuss about the profession from your perspective onwards based on our experiences and expertise. Right. Now, so as I told you, I'm basically an audiology speech pathologist. My PhD thesis is on auditory neuroscience, specifically on auditory brain stem implants. 
I am the uh, 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 one of the very early audiologists in the country, and uh, we started this Madras Center Research Foundation in 1996. Uh, and in 2004, we started an audiology course. Okay, so I was uh, uh, a young audiologist then. Then I became the chief audiologist. Then my specialization was into implantation audiology, which I will explain everything during the course of time what it means. Then I became the vice principal. Then I was a principal. Now I'm the director of the institute. In the meantime, academically, my designation grew from a clinician to a professor now. Okay. And uh, I'm also the uh, uh, the president of the Indian Speech and Hearing Association chapter for Tamil Nadu. Okay. I'm also the vice president of the Cochlear Implant Group of India. Right. So we founded the Hearing Network. So we were the founder members of the International Hearing Network Group. I will explain what the Hearing Network means because that's the one of the most exclusive club of uh, professionals working in the hearing industry, uh, hearing healthcare profession. And there are only 21 institutions which can be a member of that. And okay. there can only be 70 members who are included all over the world for that. And we, uh, when apart from uh, my uh, academic and the clinical work, uh, my area of interest is on uh, community development. So we do a lot of community-oriented activities on eradicating deafness, okay. uh, which we have, we, have, we have programs that we screen the entire Tamil Nadu. We adopt different villages and make sure people in that village doesn't remain deaf for any kind of hearing speech impairment. So this is pretty much my profile. Right. Okay. Yeah, great. Nice to know uh, more than what, as, as you rightly said, what I can Google and find out uh, much more than what I expected. And uh, you rightly said the expectations. In fact, when I wanted this session, actually I wanted to create an awareness about the options available to uh, students other than MBBS or BDS. And you rightly touched on a very sensitive subject. I don't want to say exactly what it is, but uh, probably the awareness, lack of awareness is what creating a lot of stress and anxiety among candidates. And I believe today there are so much opportunities available, uh, whether they uh, get a good score in NEET or whether they don't even take NEET. There are, there are uh, very, uh, very much options available. Only thing, whether the awareness has been created among the students, whether the students are aware of that. Uh, that's what I believe uh, probably this session will open up. Uh, thanks, Mr. Ranjit, for setting that context. Thank you. Okay, so now we'll go straight into the subject. Yeah, please. Right. So the way I approach things is everybody have a dream. Right. So I had a dream. Okay, I wanted to be a designer. That's my dream. So everybody has a dream. And the dream could be like what you want to be at the end of the day. It is not like in which field you're going to work. In whichever field you work, you're going to end up in doing some activity. What are those broad activities that you will end up in doing whichever field you take? Either, for example, you wanted to be a clinician, you want to be a doctor, where treating patients, where is the profession where you will deal with humans, okay? humans, health conditions, issues. As a clinician, we call them as clinicians. Or somebody would like to become a, a teacher. They want to be a professor. They, were, they, they have a passion to teach. So they want to be a teacher. Some of them will have a passion to do research. I want to be a researcher. I want to be a scientist. I want to invent things. I wanted to discover things. I wanted to invent things to make for uh, whichever is much more useful for people or invent things which can cure some disease or disorder. So some kind of invention as a scientist. Somebody might have an, uh, 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 a passion to be an entrepreneur. So I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to start up a business. I want to run a business. I want to be a successful businessman, make money. Somebody else said, okay, I want to do a lot of social service. My heart lies in giving a lot of service to the people. I want to get into social service, right? Some people might have a passion uh, to be a clinician, to be a researcher, to be a social uh, service person, or also to be uh, a teacher, uh, right? So every, it, the passion could be mixed as well, right? So, or you wanted to start your own hospital, you wanted to start your own clinic, or you wanted to work in a big multi-speciality hospital. 
So all these opportunities, either you want to do it in India, you want to do it outside of India, you want to do it in Middle East, somebody may have a passion to go to Canada, somebody may have a passion to go to America, Australia. So this is what it is. And somebody will also love to work in a government setup, not in a private setup. Right. So this is how in broadly whichever area of profession you take, either you're going to be a self-employed or you're going to be an entrepreneur or you're going to be employed under somebody else. Right. Either the somebody else could be a, a private, a public or government, either in India or outside India. This is how it is going to be. Even if you take the greatest of the greatest of the doctors today, they will fit in any any of these areas. Right. Okay. So this is how it is going to be in general. Now, ultimately, all of us wanted to be the best. But there are two categories of people. Some one category of people is, OK, I just want to get into a profession where I get a job. So, so that is one of the expectation. Somebody's expectation is, okay, I don't want to just go into the regular job. I want to be one out of hundred. I don't want to be one among hundred people. I want to create my own identity. Okay. So these are the two broad categories of people where they want to be identified and somebody was, I don't care about it. I want to get a good job. I want to take a salary, take care of my family. Right. Now, in general, everybody wants to get an identity. There's no doubt about it. So I want to be the best. Likewise, Mr. Manikewell wanted to be the best in his work. That's what it is. Now, these are the general expectations. This is what we want. We are trying to achieve. Now, where do we get lost is the process. We don't know what to do to get there. We always copy other success. Okay, doctors are doing very well. Look, he's a great doctor. Uh, he's one of the topmost cardiologists in the country. He's the topmost neurologist in the, uh, in the city. He's the topmost ENT surgeon in the city. So I want to be like him. So you always copy that. Okay, but the process or the procedure, what they went through, is, is different. That is what we need to look into it if you have to reach the top. Right. Now, if you look at that way, everybody's eyes are focusing on the top cardiologist or a radiologist or a neurosurgeon or whoever it is. But you should also focus your eyes on other professionals. For example, a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist, an audiologist, a speech language pathologist, etc. So they are also professionals, they are equally qualified, they're equally experienced, where you also have people, those who are as successful as doctors, if not, they're even much more successful. There are a lot of people, those are in vast majority, much more successful than an average doctors available, okay. right? Yeah. So my uh, uh, talk today is going to completely focusing on this area of health science, allied paramedical, and uh, associated health sciences, right? Right. Right. right? right. Now, before going into it, I want to make one point very clear to all of you. No profession is a bad profession. Every profession is a good profession. Whether you are good in the profession or not is a different question. The question is, you have to be good in the profession. There is no question, a profession which is a bad profession. Okay, now... We're going to talk about a healthcare industry. When you're talking about the healthcare industry, we're going to deal with people. We're going to deal with patients. Right. Now, who is your judge? Your judge is not the marks that you get in your mark sheet. The judge is not the gold medal that you're going to get from your university or from the school or wherever it is. Your judge are your patients. Your patience has to judge you that this person is a good doctor. This person is a good audiologist. This person is a good physiotherapist. So your ultimate judge are the patients. Keep that in mind. If you want to reach on top. And because all of us have that experience personally, because I go to a doctor, I take my family members to a doctor. I know who is a good doctor because we have the capacity to judge who, which doctor or which professional is good. Relate from your own experiences from your family. Right. So we can make the judgment. So you are always judged by people, which means you need to live up to the expectation of the people whom you are going to judge you. That, that's what is going to make you the best. Right. So keep these two things in mind. Every profession is a good profession, but you, how good you are in the profession is what makes you who you are. Right. There's nothing called a bad profession. Okay. 
right? Now, having said that, I will talk about audiology and speech language pathology. Now, now this audiology and speech language pathology is a four year program. And the degree what you get is called the Bachelor in Audiology and Speech Language Pathology. The four years include three years plus one year of internship. And during the internship, you will not have any theory classes. It is completely clinical, right? The first three years, you will have 50% of clinical and 50% of theory. The final fourth year is 100% clinical. Right. So totally, the weightage is almost 60 to 70 percent of the entire course period is a clinical weightage. 40 to 45 percent of the entire course period is a theoretical weightage. So major weightage is on clinical work because you are a clinician. Yeah. Okay. Right. Now, this is the degree that you're going to get. Now, this degree is offered by the university. But the program is governed by the council. So this is a very important point, which none of the students must have known. Okay. Bachelor of Audiology, Speech Language Pathology is a council governed program. MBBS is a council governed program. Okay. Physiotherapy or occupational therapy is not a council governed program. So okay. there is a medical council of India where, which governs all the medical programs is MBBS, MS, MD, all those things. The Rehabilitation Council of India, which governs audiology and speech language pathology. The Rehabilitation Council and the Medical Council are the statutory body under the Parliament Act of Government of India. Okay. So, okay. which means the course is governed by them, which means the quality of the program, the scope of job, the scope of practice, everything is defined, which means if you might have seen MBBS doctors, they were they after they finish their course, they have to register in the MCA, Medical Council of India. There is a registration number. Right. Only if they get the registration number, they are entitled to do practice. Right. right. Similarly, the audiology speech language pathologist also has a registration number by the council. The registration okay. is number is given by the council government. Okay. Right. So, which means what? When the government is recognizing you that you are a professional who can be independently practicing, treating, diagnosing patients, which means the government gives opportunity for job. Okay, it is recognized by that. Right. This is the right. first thing that you need to understand. Okay. The second thing what you need to understand is this program is one of the most demanding profession today. And this will be the most demanding profession for the next 25 years for sure. Mm -hmm. Why? Okay. Now, why does the demand arise? The demand arise because when there is a need. So what is the need for these professionals? The need for these professionals are when there is a patient, when there is a person who has got the inability to communicate due to any of the reasons in his body, this professionals comes into play. Okay. Which means the role of the professional is to treat communication disorders. Many of you might be worrying what are, I mean, not very clear about what this communication disorder. Communication disorder is a disorder that affects a person to communicate, okay. to express his intentions, to express his thoughts, right? If you have some questions, you're going to ask me, right? How do you ask? You're communicating with me. And communication is a key to basic human culture. The basic right. human chain is communication, right? right? So one day your communication is cut. For example, for one day, all the mobile companies and the television, uh, telephone companies are shut down. You see the whole world goes for a chaos. Right. 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 So communication is the key for the, uh, the cultural development. Right. So... Any problem in the communication of the person, the professionals involved are the audiologists and speech language pathologists. Such an important role they play. Right. Okay. Sorry, sorry to interrupt here, uh, Professor Ranji, just to clarify. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, where does doctors fit in, like MBBS doctors, I'm saying, do they also practice audiology and speech language? I think is in their curriculum or if I do BASLP, I become somebody specialized, which even MBBS doctors cannot practice. Or uh, what, what exactly 
Back yeah. with uh, these two yeah. are fitting in.